Okay, now we're going to take a look at the final section of Die to Live, and uh, we're going to go back to uh, our 7 4 time signature. I should have mentioned that earlier on, actually, that the main riff is actually in 7 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 1, 2. We go to a 4 4 uh, time signature for the solo section. But um, I'm going to play through the first section of the final section, all these sections, and uh, then we'll talk through it and uh, break it down. Here we go. 2, 3. <laughs> That's the first A section, familiar territory, starting off with the A chord. Then we slide up to the B on the 12th fret. Pull off to the 10th and then slide up to the uh, 17th. Back to the A chord. More harmonics. And then we play A at the 12th fret of the D, G and B, an A triad. Now for that lick, we slide from the 14th fret down to the 12th fret. Now play a D triad, which is 12, 11, 10 across the D, G and the B. So then back to 12 on the D, G and B. Back up to the uh, 14th fret. And then we play an open A. Play fourth fret harmonic on the A string, third fret harmonic in the A string. And then play five on the B string, and then five on the G string. So. And for that phrase, we slide into 12 on the B. Pull off to 10. Slide down to 7. And then 10 on the B. And then slide 9 away on the G string. OK, I'll play through for you. One, two, three. OK, now we're into the next section over the D chord, and I'll play through for you, and then we'll break it down. One, two, three, four. Again, pretty familiar territory, into the D chord. Tap our harmonics, and then we have this little figure, which is 10 on the top E and 12 on the B. Slide that down so that we have nine on the E and 10 on the B. Then uh, seven on the E and 10 on the B, and then nine, so. Then back to the D chord, or the D uh, major 7 sus 2. Remember, it's just the second fret of the G and the B, but with the open A, open D. Then we slide up to the ninth fret D. When we play the ninth fret D, that's followed by the 12th fret of the B. Slide that down by a whole tone. Re strike and then up to 14 on the D and 17 on the top E. Back to the A figure. Okay, and as we finish off that section, you simply pull off from the A chord drop the whammy bar down and gradually raise back up to pitch before striking the uh, C sus2 chord for the final section. 
Okay, here's the next section of the track. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Okay, I've taken us right up to the uh, outro there. Okay, so we start that section off with our C sus2 chord. So third fret of the A string, uh, open D, open G, third fret B. Familiar little figure. This time we have a little trill on the uh, D, F, D, so two, three, two on the D string. Open A, then the A chord. Harmonics by tapping. Now we have our natural harmonics. Back to the F. Up to the uh, 12th fret, strike twice. Slide down to 10 and then re-strike. That's on the D, uh, G, and B strings. Now I'll play an octave at the seventh fret. Slide down to the fifth fret, so that's on the A and the G string. And then seven up to eight. Open O. And then our tapped harmonics. Okay, I'll play that section through for you slowly, just up to that point, so. Okay, following our tapped harmonic, we play the ninth fret G, slide up to the 14th and bend the 14th up a whole tone on the G string. Now we play 12 to 10 on the B, and then a little slide between the two. So, one more time. Now for this next lick, we hold the uh, 10th fret of the B and we bend the G string up a whole tone, uh, unison bend, and as we do that, we play the open top E. Okay, so. Followed by a pick scrape and a slide. Okay, for the next section, we play the seventh fret of the D, slide down to the third fret. Again, we've seen that same little raking chord, but we're starting from the seventh fret D as opposed to the fifth fret, so. Now we play an A sus two chord, which is just simply the open A, second fret D, open G, and we arpeggiate the chord. Open top two strings. Jump way up the neck. Slide into the 14th fret of the D and the G and play the 15th fret of the B, pull off to the 14th fret B, and arpeggiate down 14 on the B, 14 on the G, and 14 on the D. And then slide 16 down to 14 on the G string. And then play 12 on the top two strings, so one more time. Now play 13 on the bottom E, and play 14 on the D and the G, and 12 on the B. Now slide three to five, 
play our same little figure that we've played throughout. Now to an A5 power chord. Turn that into a sus4 by adding the uh, third fret of the B string. Slide into the fifth fret of the B and play the open E. So. Slide down on the bottom of the uh, bottom E. Now we play a uh, second fret of the bottom E. Open E, open B, second fret G, so it's an F sharp minor 11. Our next chord is the chord of uh, G sus2, so that's third fret bottom E, second fret G, third fret B, so. At that point, we slide up the string on the bottom E and then dive bomb our uh, open E down and then release into an A sus2 chord. So. And now we're into the free time ending. I'll play this for you and then we'll break it down. Okay, we start off a little A blues lick, so we slide into seven on the uh, G string. Bend up a whole tone, five on the top two strings, and then bend seven up a semitone and release. Pull off to five, seven on the G, up to 11. Pull off and re strike nine on the G, so. Try and get a little artificial harmonic there, or pinched harmonic, should I say. And then That's the end sequence, which again, very, very free. Uh, we play six, seven on the G. Hammer on and pull off on the G string. Six, seven, six. Seven on the D. And seven on the A. Up to nine. Back down to seven. Five, four, five, seven, five, Four, nine, four, two, twelve. All of that figure just played on the A string. And then to finish off. Play 14 on the G, 12 on the B, 14 on the top on the G again, and then open top E. And allow the uh, notes to ring into each other. Okay, I'm going to play the whole of the end section for you now, nice and slowly. One, two, three. <laughs>
Okay, hopefully from that little demonstration, you can get a rough idea of how all the parts fit together. Wow, okay, there's quite a lot uh, there for you to get through. Like I said before, it's not your regular Steve Vai track, you know, very widdly, but the one thing that it is, it, it really, you know, makes use of a lot of control, uh, some well-placed licks, nice use of techniques, harmonics, and, and also the, the chordal fills as well, so there's a lot for you to learn from this track.